Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and welcome back to a new art journal layout. My project today has a vintage look and feel and I will be working with a professor stamp set by Tim Holtz. This is very popular and I have been holding on it. And finally today is the day where I am going to use it. I will be working on my Delusions art journal. And I'm going to experiment today. I will play with my Distress Spray Stain and I'm going to combine it with Distress Oxide Spray just so I can see what I get. Now I will be using the exact same color combo like this page where I used the vintage photo and a speckled egg. However, on this page I created the background using the Distress Ink Pads. While for today I'm going to play with the sprays just to see what different color combos I can get. Now I'm going to bring in a very old Sizzix tie, this was also designed by Tim Holtz and it has all those gears on top and I went ahead and cut them out, I just used some scrap uh, craft paper but it doesn't really need to be any colored. I'm going to lay them on top of my pages and I do know that I'm going to use the professor and probably the professor is going to go right there. So having that in mind, I'm going to decide where all those gears are going to go. I'm working on my uh, Ranger silicone mat on the side. It is really easy to clean up. Not that the glass mat isn't easy, but just for filming reasons, I like to keep my area nice and clean and tidy for you guys. So it's easy for me to just remove the um, silicone mat and have a clean uh, area again. Now for uh, sticking everything down, I'm using my mat medium and uh, I'm just spreading out all those gears. For the one that I wanted to be in the middle, I'm just going to cut it in half and then stick it next to each other. This way I will be able to open the, and close the book with no problem at all. And as I'm sticking all those gears down, I just want to apologize. Sometimes you might hear lots of noise at the background. These are the neighbors who are renovating, but I'm going to continue doing my voiceovers as if nothing is going on outside. Please let me know in the comments down below if the noise is too disturbing, because then I will have to do the voiceovers during the evening when the builders aren't working. So anyway, let's move on to the next phase. And this is where I'm going to combine spray stain with oxide spray and you will see that both are going to work just fine together. Uh, first I decided to apply a little bit of moist, this is water in this bottle. This is going to help all the next uh, sprays to blend better. So I'm starting with vintage photo and then I'm going to apply speckled egg. And I can already see how different this uh, color combo looks against the one that I did previously with the same colors but in ink pads. I'm adding even more water and I absolutely love how these colors blend together. I think that this is the perfect color combo for creating vintage backgrounds and um, I absolutely love how that speckled egg when it comes together with a vintage photo it gives that almost greenish look. So I'm using my heat gun to make sure that everything is nice and dry and I'm also since I have a lot of water on top of my page I'm going to help that move even more by lifting the pages. By sticking down the gears beforehand I do have some texture and interest on my background and by just using two colors I ended up having an instant background that I think is just gorgeous. Now I'm just going to add some finishing touches on my background, these are techniques that I always like to do. And I'm starting with stamping, I'm using uh, black archival ink and the stamps that I'm playing with are from the professor stamp set. Notice how I avoid having a perfect stamping image. I think that uh, this uh, adds more to the look that I'm going for. And I'm also going to switch to another stamp now and go all around the borders. Notice that I'm not even using a stamping block. This way I get imperfect stamping, which is exactly what I'm going for. I also like to have darker edges, this is another technique, a go-to technique for me. So I'm using black suit and I'm going all around with my blending tool, darkening up the edges. This is going to bring more the eye towards the center of my page and it looks more finished. 
Now, all those years are slightly raised, so I'm uh, going over them with my blending tool without pressing at all, so the ink stays only on top of the gear, and this is going to help define them even more and they stand out better from the background. However, I don't want them to be super vibrant, so I'm not overdoing that. Now it's time to add some splashes. First I'm starting with water. I'm going to leave that there for a few seconds to react with the ink underneath and then I'm just going to blot it with my paper towel. I'm also going to add some black splashes and these are going to be the finishing touch for my background. I'm really happy with uh, how it looks at the moment. I'm going to leave it aside to dry and then I will start working on my focal point. Now my focal point is going to be the professor, so I'm going to stamp him and I'm using my stamping platform. This is quite of a big stamp and I need to get a good impression. So I'm stamping that with black archival ink, that's jet black, and um, I'm working on uh, mixed media paper. Now for his glasses I wanted to have some shine, that's why I brought in my embossing glaze. This is in speckled egg and it's going to match nicely with my background. So I'm using my uh, Ranger embossing pen, so this is going to apply some transparent ink only on the areas where I want to apply the embossing powder. It's going to stick there and then I am going to heat set it. Now remember that embossing glaze is transparent, which means that it's going to add a shiny tint on anywhere you are going to emboss it, but it's going to be transparent. So if you do that over black, you are going to end up with shiny black. And here is my second mistake, my black ink wasn't completely dry so I have powder all over the place. Now this second mistake is easy to fix, I'm just going to use a, clear, a clean brush and I'm just going to dust off any excess powder. And I'm bringing in my heat gun here, completely unaware of what is going to happen. So I'm going to melt my embossing powder and remember this is clay so it is transparent and I end up having just black shine. It looks great and it's perfectly usable, however I was going for that uh, speckled egg tint on his glasses, that's why I'm going to show you how I fixed it. All I'm going to do is to stamp his glasses one more time by using my Versamark ink. I'm going to apply my powder there and just cut out the parts that I want so that I can stick them on top of my glasses. Also notice that I did use my scissors to cut all around him without leaving any border at all and I did run a black marker all around the edges just to cover up any cutout mistakes. And now I'm using my scissors and I'm going to cut out the glasses. And these really add too much on the page. First of all they are the same color as the background so they match perfectly and at the same time they add shine on his glasses. It is quite difficult to catch on camera but trust me it really makes a difference in real life. Now my professor is currently black and white but I want to add some color on him. For that you can use watercolors, you can use any other type of coloring medium you like. I decided to go with my alcohol markers. I'm not doing any crazy coloring, just adding a little bit of uh, color on his skin. And I don't know how this idea came to me but for some reason when I was coloring him I had that uh, idea to use fired brick to tint his clothes. And I'm just using a post-it note to mask off his collar, making sure that this is going to stay nice and white. And now to put everything together, I'm going to add a little bit of vintage photo on him as well, since I have that color on my background. And since on my background I don't have at all that uh, red color of fine brick, I'm just going to use my dabber and go here and there with that color, just to bring in that touch and at the same time it looks like rust, so I think it matches nicely with the look that I was going for. Now I'm going to stick him down. And I did use matte medium for that. I have a little bit of a gap between the bottom of my page and where I stick him down, and that's because I want it to be more towards the top. So for that gap I'm going to fill it in with uh, some washi tape so that he doesn't look as if he is floating there. I am combining a couple of washi tapes I had in my stash for ages and uh, I like the black 
along with the one that has a tape measure on top. So both of them have numbers and I think they match nicely with the rest of the page. Now I always have like to add a washi tape in triangles so that's why I'm going to create two more clusters on my page. So on the first cluster I'm going to go with a sticker that says trust your crazy ideas. On the second cluster I went with another sticker that says never doubt your instinct. And finally on the last one up top on the right corner I went with B original. I am using my white gel pen to add some highlights on some of the gears, not everywhere, just a few here and there. This is going to help them stand out even more. Now I want to use this but it is quite thick, I don't want to add too much bulk on my pages. That's why I'm going to peel off the top, it's really easy to do that. And now I can stick it down. And I'm really happy with how this layout came together. I absolutely love the fact that although I used the same color combination, just by using different mediums of the same colors, I ended up with a completely different look. Now I'm going to stamp the day and I'm going to call this project done. You can see here some close-up photos. I hope that you had fun today, that you got inspired. You will find links to everything I used down below in the description area. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll see you all next time.